Okay, let's continue our discussion. Let's have our preparation already of what we call as the financial transaction worksheet in application of what we call as the accounting equation. Again, when we prepare accounting equation, we have asset is equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. So, uh, please take note that in owner's equity, hindi lang capital and withdrawals ang consider natin, especially when we are preparing accounting equation. So, we, when we are applying accounting equation. So, in owner's equity, in the preparation of the accounting equation or in consideration of the accounting equation, all the transactions such as, all the transactions that will reflect the accounts, accounts from income statement and the accounts from owner's equity such as capital and withdrawals will reflect to owner's equity. Again, in the preparation of this financial transaction worksheet in consideration of the use of the accounting equation, in owner's equity, magre-reflect po dyan si capital, si withdrawals, and income statement accounts such as expenses and revenue. Okay? So, here, let's start already, but before that, let me just mention to you the general problem or general statement for the business. During March 2010, the first months of operations, various financial transactions took place. So, these transactions are described and analyzed as follows. So, bawat transaction, so we have from March 1 transaction until March 31, we are going to to, to analyze it. We are going to describe ano yung nangyari and at the same time, we have to analyze kung saan natin siya ilalagay. Nasa asset ba siya, liabilities or owner's equity yung bawat transaction. And please do take note of, uh, please take note of this, that in every transaction, in every business financial transaction, sa bawat isang transaction na yan, there is a minimum of two accounts involved. Okay? Two accounts or account titles involved. So, hindi po pwede na less than two. Dapat pwede siya two or more. Pero pag less than two, hindi pa pwede. Okay? Dapat dalawa lagi siya or higit pa sa dalawa. Hindi pa pwede na iisa lang. Okay? So, hindi pa pwedeng, as, uh, hindi pa pwedeng cash, cash lang. Hindi pa pwedeng ganon na isang cash lang. Hindi ganon. Pag sinabi natin, uh, sinabi natin dito sa pag-a-analyze at pag-describe ng financial transaction, it must have minimum of two account titles or two accounts involved. Okay? So, first, let's start with March 1. First financial transaction. So, for the first financial transaction, March 1, Medina started his new business by depositing 350,000 pesos in a bank account. So, ngayon, pag ganito yung mga transaction, tanongin nyo lang yung sarili nyo, what is the purpose of this? Yung transaction na to, ano yung purpose niya? Ba't nangyari to? Ano yung pumasok o lumabas na pera, na pera sa business? Para saan yung ipinasok o lumabas na pera sa ating business? E ang nangyari sa March 1, pumasok. Deposit eh. Si business daw may puma, si si owner, si business owner daw may ipinasok na pera sa sa sa, sa business natin or doon sa bank account ng business natin. So may pera. So ibig sabihin cash na agad 'yon. Ano yung pumasok na na pumasok sa business pera? O, di pera yung ipinasok ni owner. Anong tawag naman natin doon sa account title na yon Na kapag may inilalagay na pagmamayari ng owner doon sa business. Yung pagmamayari ng owner, ipinasok niya doon sa business. Ang tawag po natin doon ay capital. So, therefore, the two accounts involved here is cash and capital. The question Yung sa dalawang account titles na yon saan sila naka, napapabilang na kategory or account? Sila ba'y sa asset, liabilities, or owner's equity? And from the chart of account, cash is part of an asset. So, ilalagay lang natin dito, cash, how much? 350,000 pesos. And another, di ba sabi ko, minimum of 2, not less than 2, minimum of 2, 2 or more account titles ang involved per transaction. Okay, 350 and the other one is capital. Capital from our accounts, uh, from our chart of accounts that is part of owner's equity. So, that is capital 350,000 pesos. So, please take note that do not forget to include the currency. 
the currency of the of the amount kapag dollar di dollar kapag peso di peso okay so that is part of the monetary principle okay you go back from our first discussion in our first video material in accounting okay 350,000 pesos so next march 5 march 5 Analyze ulit natin. Computer equipment costing 145,000 pesos is acquired on cash basis. O, isipin nyo, may nilabas ba tayong pera? Para saan yung inilabas nating pera? So, bumili daw tayo ng computer equipment. And computer equipment is an asset. Para saan? Ano yung nilabas natin? May nilabas tayong pera. Nagkakahalaga ng 145,000 pesos. Para saan yung inilabas nating pera? Para bumili ng computer equipment. Then that's it already. We have cash and computer equipment. So, may nadagdago na bawas ba sa cash? Nabawas. Kasi pinambayad natin eh. So, pinambayad natin 145,000, okay? In accounting class, for we to declare it as deduction doon sa pera, ng business natin, we use open and close parenthesis. Yun nga lang in Excel, even if we use open and close parenthesis, nagne-negative siya afterward. So, yan. At least we practice on using the open and close parenthesis as indicative na siya ay kabawasan sa pera ng business natin. So, 145,000 pesos. So, nabawa siya sa pera. Dahil bumili tayo ng, ano ang binili natin? Computer Equipment. And we all know that equipment or computer equipment is an asset. Dagdag siya sa pagmamayari ng ating negosyo. So, magkano halaga niya? 145,000 pesos. So, March 9, computer supplies in the amount of 25,000 pesos are purchased on account. So, please take note again of this one. Be careful also that in accounting, You have to be cautious with the terms that we use. So, if you have seen something like on accounts or on credit, tapos kayo ang bumile, business natin yung nagbumile, tapos on accounts or on credit ang nakalagay, ibig sabihin agad yan, may pagkakautang si business natin. Okay? Kapag may binili si business, tapos hindi sinabi kong cash na binayaran at may nakalagay na on accounts or on credit, automatically, yan ay pagkakautang ng ating negosyo. So, ibig sabihin, may binili si business na computer supplies, pero hindi niya pa ito binabayaran. So, ibig sabihin, may nadagdag sa ating pagmamayari, that is computer supplies. Nagkakahalaga yan ng 25,000 pesos. Pero, hindi natin siya binayaran, kaya hindi siya mababawa sa cash. Pero, yun ay magmamark as our pagkakautang. And we all know that when we say pagkakautang, that is a liability. And in particular, the account title is accounts payable. Amounting to 25,000 pesos. Nagdag sa pagkakautang natin. Okay? Or nagkaroon tayo ng pagkakautang. For March 11, we have Medina Graphics Design collected 88,000 pesos in cash for designing interactive websites for two exporters based inside Davao EcoZone. So, ibig sabihin, yung business daw natin or yung business ni Mr. Medina ay nakapag-collecta. Okay? I-analyze ninyo. May pumasok o may lumabas na pera. Para saan yung pumasok o lumabas na pera? Ibig sabihin, pumasok ba o lumabas yung pera? Pumasok kasi sinabi dito na yung business ni Mr. Medina ay nakapag-collecta ng 88,000. So, ibig sabihin, may pumasok na cash. Automatically, may isa na agad tayong accounts title. We have cash. Para saan yung nakolekta nating cash? Dahil nakapag-render ng service si ating business or yung business ni Mr. Medina. Dahil nakapag-render siya ng, business, ng kanyang service sa customer or sa client, may natanggap tayong cash. So, ang tawag natin doon, nung nag-discuss tayo sa chart of account, yun ay tinatawag nating benta or kita natin. So, that is service revenue. So, pasok muna tayo kay cash. May nakolekta tayong 8,000, 88,000. So, ibig sabihin may madadagdag sa cash ng business na 88,000. Another, hindi pwedeng iisa lang, dapat dalawa, nakapag-render ng service si business. So, ibig sabihin, meron tayo tinatawag na service revenue. Uulitin ko, in the preparation of the accounting equation or in the financial transaction worksheet in consideration of the accounting equation, 
income statement account such as service revenue, expenses, capital and withdrawals will reflect to owner's equity. So, yung income statement accounts natin is revenue and expenses. So, kanina meron tayong service revenue dahil nakapag-render tayo ng service sa client or yung business si Mr. Medina nakapag-render ng service sa ating client may kinita tayo. So, ibig sabihin siya ay magre-reflect kay owner's equity nagkakalaga ng 88,000 pesos. Okay, next, March 16, Medina paid 18,000 pesos to Bills Express, a one-stop bills payment service company for the semi-monthly utilities. You ask yourself again, may pumasok o may lumabas na pera? Sabihin natin, nagbayad. Yung business ni Mr. Medina, nagbayad daw. So, ibig sabihin, pag nagbayad, may lumabas na pera. So, yung nilabas nating pera, para saan? What's the purpose? Ano yung purpose ng paglabas ng pera? Para bayaran yung mga expenses natin, utilities expenses natin. Diba kung na, napanood nyo yung video material last time, pag sinabi natin utilities, this is referring to the account such as yung pag nagbabayad tayo ng expenses natin for electricity, water, yan, yan yung utilities expense natin. Okay? So, here, nagbayad tayo, naglabas tayo ng pera, so we, it only means that we have cash and expenses or particularly utilities expense. So, the two accounts involved, we have cash and utilities expense. So, sabi nga natin kanina, nabawasan yung cash natin. So, ibig sabihin, mababawasan tayo na 18,000 pesos. So, next is, ano naman yung involved? We have expenses. So, binayaran natin is expenses. So, sabi ko kanina, ulitin ko ulit, Income, uh, income statement account such as expenses and service revenue will reflect in owner's equity. So, 18,000 pesos. Okay? So, next, March 17, the entity has service agreements with several netpreneurs to maintain and update their websites weekly. So, Medina builds his clients 35,000 pesos for services only rendered during the month. So, ibig sabihin, if you will try to describe and analyze the transaction on March 17, nakapag-render daw ng service ang company natin, company ni Mr. Medina, sa ating kliyente. So, nakapag-render tayo ng service. Pag nabasa nyo, nakapag-render ng service si business sa client, that is automatically a service revenue. Tama? Service revenue na agad yun. Huwag nyo nang isipan pa ng iba pa. Nakapag-render ng service si business sa ating client, service revenue yun. Okay? So, we have already one. Service revenue. Now, may natanggap ba tayong cash? Wala. So, nakapag-render tayo ng service, pero wala tayong natatanggap na cash. So, ibig sabihin, may pagkakautang si client natin sa atin. At ang tawag natin dyan is an asset which is in the form of accounts receivable. Balikan na lang po natin yung, yung mga discussion natin sa chart of accounts. So, accounts receivable, may pagkakautang na dapat bayaran sa business natin si Customer. So, nagkakahalaga yan ng 35,000 pesos. Bakit nagkaroon ng utang si customer sa atin? What's the purpose of that? Dahil nakapag-render tayo ng service sa kanya. So, that is 35,000 pesos. Ulitin ko ha, pag may nabasa kayo na rendered service or nakapag-render ng serbisyo or service si business sa client natin, that is service revenue. Okay? Next! March 19, Medina paid a partial payment of 17,000 for the March 9 purchased on account. So, balikan natin yung March 9. Nung March 9 daw, bumili tayo ng computer supplies pero hindi pa natin binabayaran. So, nagkaroon tayo ng pagkakautang. Bumili tayo ng computer supplies pero yun ay hindi pa natin binabayaran kaya siya ay naging pagkakautang. So, ngayon, balik tayo dito sa March 19. Pagdating ng March 19, binayaran na natin siya. Pero hindi pa natin siya binayaran ng buo. Partial payment lang muna siya. So, ngayon, nagbayad tayo. Ano ang pinambayad? Ano ang binayaran? Tanongin ang sarili, ano ang pinabayad? May lumabas na pera ba? May lumabas. Para saan yung inilabas na pera? Ano yung binayaran? Ano yung pinambayad? Okay? May nilabas eh. Sabi paid. So, ibig sabihin, yung business natin, nagbayad. So, nagbayad yung business, may inilabas tayong pera. So, isa na kagad yun, Pera or cash. So, we have, may nabawa sa ating 17,000 
pesos. Next, para saan yon? Para magbawas ng pagkakautang. So, may utang tayo na 25,000 before. Babawasan natin siya ngayon ng 17,000 pesos. Siyempre, di ba, pag may pagkakautang tayo at nagbayad tayo ng utang, siyempre, gusto natin ibawas yun. Wala ka namang idagdag natin siya, di ba? So, babawasan din natin yung pagkakautang natin ng 17,000 pesos. Another, March 20, checks or cheque. Totaling 20 to 5,000 pesos were received from clients for billing dated March 17. Balikan natin si March 17. Anong nangyari dito? Noong March 17, nakapag-render tayo ng service sa ating clients. Yun nga lang, hindi tayo binayaran pa ng ating kliyente. Kaya nag-reflect siya dito as nag-render tayo ng service, 35,000, pero hindi niya pa tayo binabayaran ng cash, nagkaroon siya ng pagkakautang sa business natin. So, ibig sabihin, yung client natin may pagkakautang sa business natin. So, pagdating ng, pagdating ng March 20, si client daw natin, nung client natin nung March 9, eh, nag, nung March 17, yung client natin nung March 17 ay nagbayad na sa atin. So, nagbayad na siya, halagang 25,000 pesos. Ano ang natanggap? Para saan yung natanggap nating pera? So, yung natanggap natin is cash, 25,000 pesos, dagdagan sa pera ng ating business. Para saan yon? Ano naman yon? Para saan yung natanggap nating pera? Yun ay bilang kabayaran ng ating customer sa ating business. So, pag nagbayad ng utang si customer, dapat nating ibawas yun sa kanilang pagkaka-utang. So, as that is... 25,000 pesos. O, ba? So, nagbayad ng utang si customer ng 25,000 pesos. So, yung 25,000 pesos, ibabawas natin yun sa pagkakautang nila sa atin noong March 17. Okay, let's proceed on March 21. March 21, Medina withdraw 20,000 pesos from the business for his personal use. Napakadaling intindihan. Kitang-kita na kagad. Anong ginawa? Ano ang inilabas? Anong purpose ng transaction na to? Mag-withdraw. So, ibig sabihin, si owner ng business naglabas ng pera sa ating negosyo. So, naglabas agad ng pera. So, we have cash. Nagbawas or naglabas. So, ibig sabihin, bawas yan. Ide-deduct din natin yan dito. We have 20,000 pesos. So, nabawas siya. 20,000 Yan. Ano yung isa? May term na naginamit. We have withdrawals. So, withdraw. Pag withdrawal, saan ba siya papasok? We have here owner's equity. Withdrawals. Okay? So, we have here 20,000 pesos. Okay? Tingnan lang na mabuti. Basahin lang na mabuti yung transaction. Another. Loke, loke. Uh, publish, submit as publishing submitted a bill to Medina for 8,000 pesos worth of newspaper advertisements for this month. So, Medina will pay this bill next month. So, ibig sabihin, si Loke Loke Publishing ay nagbigay uh, na ng bill sa business ni Mr. Medina para sa advertisement na ginawa ni Loke Loke Publishing para sa business ni Mr. Medina. So, ngayon, tanongin ang sarili, Yung 8,000 pesos na yon ay para saan? Yung inilabas ba o pinasok na pera? So, automatically, yan ay ilalabas pa lang. Kasi nakalagay dito sa dulo, Medina will pay this bill next month pa. So, ibig sabihin, ilalabas pa lang na pera ng business ni Mr. Medina. Para saan yung ilalabas na pera? Yung ilalabas na pera ay para sa pagbabayad natin sa advertisement na ginawa sa atin ng Loke Loke Publishing. Okay? So, ibig sabihin, we have, ano yon? Medina will pay bill, the bill next month. So, ibig sabihin, may pagkakautang si ating business kay Loke Loke Publishing na 8,000 pesos. Nadagdagan na naman ang ating pagkakautang. And another, advertisement is an expense. Under expense recognition principle, we recognize an account or an, uh, an expense as an expense if we already consumed the product or services kung nagamit na natin siya. E eh, nagamit na natin yung newspaper advertisement. So, ibig sabihin, it is an 
expense. So, let us write it as, ad, as an advertising expense. So, advertising expense, how much yun? Mababawas yun sa pera ng business natin. We have 8,000 pesos. Okay? So, last transaction. March 31, Medina paid his assistant designer salaries of 15,000 pesos for the month. So, napakadaling intindihin, nagbayad daw si business. So, ibig sabihin, may inilabas na pera si business. Para saan? What's the purpose of that? Para saan yung inilabas na pera? Inilabas niya yung pera para pambayad sa salaries ng kanyang assistant designer. 15,000 pesos for the month. Okay? So, may inilabas na pera, automatic, uh, first account natin dyan is cash. Another, para saan yung binayad na pera? Salaries. So, binayaran yung salaries, that is an expense. So, we have here, kabawasan sa pera ng business, bawa sa cash. Yan. Another is salaries. Salaries is an expense. Idagdag lang natin siya dito. Salaries, expense, how much? 15,000 pesos. So, that is a deduction since it is an expense. Kabawasan siya sa pera ng negosyo or sa kaban ng negosyo. Okay? That's it already on how we are going to describe and analyze each financial transaction. Now, we're going to compute already kung tama ba, kung total ba siya, yung total ng bawat account ay balance ba. Okay? Kunin muna natin, i-add muna natin or i-minus muna natin or i-deduct yung mga uh, figures or yung amounts from each transaction. So, ngayon, gagamit lang naman ako ng, ng shortcut from the Excel. So, I will just simply get the sum kasi nga may mga ginamit naman na tayo dyan eh. So, may minus, tapos yung walang minus, ibig sabihin, yun ay for ano yan, positive sign or in addition. Okay? So, the total is 248,000. So, ikakapi ko na lang yan, ipipaste. Ganito lang naman yan, class. Uh, okay. Here for the checks, 25,000 pesos. Yung check, eh, baka malito kayo. Ma'am, ang sabi kasi dito kanina, check eh. E di ba dapat yan ay naka-check eh, or check or cash equivalent, hindi siya naka-cash. But you may or you may not. Okay? You may include it as part of the cash, kaya siya tinawag na cash equivalent din naman. You may include it as a cash or you may include it here, particularly as cash or cash equivalent or check. Okay? Sa, sa point ko and sa module ninyo, ang ginawa kasi, it is included as uh, as part of the cash already. Si checks. Okay? So, here, wala na yan dyan. So, just simply apply the shortcut. Okay. Pero kapag kayo naman ay wala pong Excel na ginagamit, pwede naman po ang gawin natin dyan is plus minus, plus minus lang naman yan. Halimbawa, itong kay uh, uh, liabilities, 25,000 minus 17,000 plus 8,000, plus minus lang po. Okay? So here, kunin naman natin ang total, ito, ito, kunin naman natin yung total nito, 350 plus 123 plus 18,000 plus 20,000 plus 8,000 plus 15,000. Ganun lang po. Ganun din dito. Kunin din natin yung total niya. Okay? 10,000 plus 25 plus 145 plus 248,000. Okay? Kunin lang natin yung total. Okay? So, ngayon, ang total ng asset natin, ito ay asset. Asset yan ha. Ang asset natin, ang total ay 428,000. Ngayon, dapat makuha natin kung balance ba si asset kay liabilities plus owner's equity. Ilan ba ang total? So, dapat si asset balance kapag inad natin si liabilities kay owner's equity. So, this 16,000 represents the owner, ah, the liability. So, liability plus our owner's equity, 452,000. Wait lang, parang lumaki tayo. Okay. Service revenue 35. Our withdrawals, it should be deduction. Sorry. Okay. So, 
16,000 our liabilities plus owner's equity is 428,000. Yung ginawa ko kanina yung sa withdrawal sana limutan ko lang siya lagyan ng uh, i-deduct Naka-add kasi siya. So, nag-withdraw tayo, nagbawas tayo. So, ibig sabihin, mababawas din siya sa pera ng negosyo. So, minus 20,000 yun. Okay? So, that's it already. So, the total of the asset, of the liability plus owner's equity is 428,000. Balance ba siya? Balance silang dalawa. Si asset ay balance kapag in natin si liabilities kay owner's equity, 428,000. Okay, that's it already. That is how we are going to prepare our financial work, uh, financial transaction worksheet. Okay po, yan. We arrived into a balance account. Okay.